How can you deal with failure? There's a lot of content out there on how to manage the fear of failure, but what about if you actually fail? Having myself worked for many years as an entrepreneur, coached a lot of entrepreneurs, failure is our bread and butter, and there's actually a way you can manage failure and not get totally discouraged every time you fail. The first step is to look at not what the learnings are, we'll get to that. The first step is accept it and face reality. When you fail at something that's important for you, whether it's a business goal or something personal, or maybe this relationship you're really hoping would work out, and sometimes things feel so bitter and you really feel you fell, failed hard at something, the best thing you can do to begin is to face it because the more you ignore it, the more you try to numb yourself through instant gratification and distractions, the bigger these feelings of discouragement and maybe lower self-esteem will start to build up. So that's the very first step. You want to really acknowledge and look failure in the eye and think, okay, this didn't work out. As you do this, you might want to start to reframe it as failure instead Actually, even though you're accepting it and acknowledging it, reframing it as this didn't work or didn't work out or experiment didn't work instead of the word failure because the word failure has very high connotation. We're not trying to ignore the fact that it didn't work out. We're just trying to reframe it in a way that's not as painful because otherwise you won't be encouraged to do it again or to try one more time. Because the truth is if you stop a failure one, if you had done that already in the past, you wouldn't know how to walk or learn or speak a language because we fail a million times as kids before we learn to walk, for example. So we want to build our own inner resilience and become accustomed with this, oh, this didn't work out. And when you run your own business and you're an entrepreneur and founder, maybe you are <laughs> watching or maybe you want to be, then you'll know that, oh, okay, this marketing trial, that didn't work or this sales call, I was really hoping to work with that client, they turned me down. Or I pitched to speak at this event, I was so excited and they'd said yes and then they changed their mind. Or I wrote to this article and wanted to publish in a magazine and they said no. So you get a lot of no's and a lot of things that feel like failure, what do you do? We said step one is don't ignore it, acknowledge it, accept this is a reality and also accept your feelings around it. We're hum humans, we're not robots. Even if you're a self-development junkie and you know the failure is simply learning, you can still feel upset about it. You can still feel disappointed or hurt. Accept those feelings. You're human. It's normal if this was a big deal or big project or maybe your entire company has gone bankrupt after 10 years. It's kind of normal that you'll feel some grief, some upsetness when this happens. What matters is what you do after that. How do you bounce back? You accept the situation, you accept your feelings, so self-compassion, and then you start to see how does this look from the future? This is one of the things that has helped me most when it comes to failure, is projecting, looking at my alter ego, looking at my future self five, 10 years from now with the vision of how my life looks like, my business looks like, and think, when this person looks back to the current situation where I failed, what do they see and how is this a stepping stone to where they are now? I'll repeat this. So you look from your future for self perspective, maybe in five years or 10 years, and you see how your current circumstances as failure were actually a stepping stone towards the success that you want then or that you achieve in that point. This helps to reframe, indeed, failure as a learning, but also to see that that failure was necessary because it gave you the grit. It checked how important that goal actually was for you. It gave you the resilience. Because the funny thing about resilience is the only way to build resilience is to fail over and over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> and each time you step up, you become more resilient. There's no such thing as a person out there who is resilient. That's their personality. 
that's not a thing. They became resilient. Maybe they had a tough childhood. Maybe they went through some obstacles. Maybe they built it through doing fitness events and competition. Maybe through doing cold plunges. Maybe through business deals and negotiations. But they built the resilience by having a no, failing, not succeeding once more, and stepping up again. And that's how you build resilience. So when you look at your future self perspective and they're looking back at your current failure, you ask your future self, what are you getting from this circumstance? How is this current situation, this current failure helped you to get to this future success? And then you need a bit of imagination here, but your future self might say, this is because you needed to check how aligned that goal was. Or this is because you need to, to learn to be a little more relevant, a little more aligned with the actions you were taking. Or maybe it was because you were getting a bit too cocky and you needed a bit of a humility test. There's a lot of reasons why you could have failed in that moment and how it supports your long-term goal, destination, success, whatever you choose to call it. If on the moment it feels to you like this failure is totally unexpected and isn't helpful at all and you can't learn anything from it, then maybe that's when you need to learn acceptance. Because maybe there you're in a place of such strong resistance of why did this happen and I was supposed to win the gold medal at the Olympics, why did I fail and not even get the bronze medal, then you are not accepting the current circumstances. And I did an episode recently on suffering and how suffering comes from aversion and clinging and acceptance is what gets us out of suffering. If you're in a situation where you feel that this failure is totally unfair, this might be your wake up call to go down the route of acceptance. And then again, start to look from the perspective of your future self, how is this a stepping stone towards where you want to go? On another episode, I talk about the arrival fallacy, this idea that when you reach a certain goal or destination, you will finally be happy. And I have struggled with the arrival fallacy like so much. <laughs> There's no other way to put this, a lot. I always had the illusion that once I get to this place in my business, in my fitness, in my relationship, then I will finally be happy. And when I discovered the concept of the arrival fallacy, it was a total epiphany, a total eye opener, because that's when I realized there is no destination, there is no top of the mountain, amazing view, and then you'll finally be happy. Now is when you can be happy if you choose to be, if you shift your perspective, if you change your hormonal balance and your psychology, you can be happy. It's a matter of perspectives, gratitude, your body feeling good, exercising, and appreciation for where you're currently at. And this takes a lot of mental retraining when you're someone like me, very goal-oriented, who is firmly convinced that when you arrive at the top of the mountain, that's it. That's when the view will be great, that's when you'll feel on top of the world, and everything will be amazing. It's not true, it's a lie. Look it up everywhere. It's not true, and part of this is because when you have this belief, it means that all along the journey feels like a grudge, which means you're going against the present moment, which leads to suffering. And it also means you develop the mental habits and conditioning that keep you upset, dissatisfied, frustrated. So when you get to your seven, eight figure business, for instance, you will have that same psychology. And it's only by shifting how you feel about your current circumstances, including failure, including hardships, that then you will find yourself at your famous destination if and when you get there and realize that it hasn't really changed that much. It might be satisfying, it might feel good, you might have a sense of completion. I'm not saying goals do not matter. I'm saying that if you put all your energy on goals, solving all your emotional problems, it won't work because transformation always happens from the inside out, not from the outside in. So anything that happens externally doesn't make you feel a certain way. You choose how you feel about external circumstances based on the thoughts, the perspective, the emotions you have about that situation. That can be due to preconditioning in your life, can be due to 
Past traumas can be due from habits, beliefs, values that you have accumulated that make you feel a certain way about circumstances. And that's where the power of meditation comes in because it helps you to detach yourself from the thoughts so you see things in a different way and feel differently about them. So coming back to this idea and concept of failure, this is where you detach yourself and see it for what it is and don't cling to this notion of this failure is making me feel miserable, unhappy, frustrated. Nothing can make you feel a certain way. You choose how you feel about things. And this leads us to the next point, which is be proactive. As you know, the first habit of the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey is be proactive. And be proactive has two core meanings. The first meaning, and by far the most important meaning, is to take full ownership of how you feel and to focus on your circle of influence, to look at what it is you can influence. Mostly your thoughts, your emotions, your psychology. This is pretty much it, your body, your actions. That's kind of all you can really influence. And when you come back to this, when your circumstances are failure, let's say you wanted to bring in a new investment and it was turned down, that is external. How you deal with it internally in terms of your thoughts and your emotions is something that is within your control. And this is what Stephen Covey talks about when he talks about being proactive. The second part of being proactive is what we mostly think about, which is doing something about it. And this leads to the biggest second aspect of failure, which is what are you going to do about it? The first one is accept, look it in the eye, have a bit of self-compassion, accept your feelings and emotions around it, nice self-talk, beating yourself up and self-criticism doesn't get anyone anywhere, so a bit of being nice, but then what actions are you going to do? And this is absolutely fundamental because what happens is, generally, if you haven't built up that resilience yet, failure will make you feel smaller. On the moment, your self-esteem is going to drop. Self-esteem, the way you view yourself, your self-perspective will be like, oh, why am I such a failure? Why is everything so hard? Why can't I finally make it? Then you need to start to take certain actions to rebuild your self-esteem. It's the equivalent of when you fall off the horse, if you're riding horses, jump back on it. <laughs> because if you don't and you go into passivity, which is where you end up binge watching television or scrolling your phone for hours, your self-esteem starts to drop more and more and more because you are proving to yourself that indeed you're not taking any actions and you are a failure and etc. And by the way, there's no such thing as someone is a success or is a failure. They're always actions. So please not I am a success or I am a failure. Just this action didn't work out or this action did work out. No, no identity level of failure. This is extremely unhelpful. So coming back to this notion of taking action, small wins, and depending where you are on your journey, depending how much uh, you've struggled, hardships you've been through, it might just be making the bed. It might just be getting up on time. It might just be a five minute meditation practice. Set yourself up to win. And if you're a high achiever, like most people that I work with and coach and myself, we have a tendency to place the bar very high. This is what gives us that drive and excitement that pushes us. But if you're in a sensitive place and you're just rebouncing from failure, you want to set yourself up for success. You want to make your wins as small and easy as possible to rebuild that self-trust and rebuild that self-esteem and keep it in the same area that you've had your failure. So if it's, for example, a business failure, what's a small win you can do in your business that helps you to stay on track, that helps you to feel like you're still progressing and that gives you this momentum and energy and rebuilds your self-esteem. What we don't want is just, oh, this failed. Let me just not do anything for two weeks. <laughs> Probably won't happen if you're a high achiever, but depends on the quality of the failure, you might feel that way. You might have a strong sense of discouragement and not want to do anything. Action, rebuild that self-esteem. So the first big part was all around your psychology around it, accepting it, self-compassion, seeing it as a stepping stone towards your future self and your success. The second part is all around action and taking small actions, baby steps, small wins to rebuild that self-esteem and trust 
And the last big part is all around inspiration. Because what I found is if we're super driven, super ambitious, and then we sort of like running, bam, fall on the floor, bam, fall on the floor, we can start to struggle to have these big dreams and ambitions because we'll think, well, what's the point? <laughs> I keep struggling, I keep failing. What's the point of me aiming super high? I'm clearly never going to make it. Let me just aim for this small goal. And then what? Then you get discouraged because maybe you're a big thinker, maybe you like these big, exciting goals or big, exciting vision and you lose all that energy. Especially, well, like I said, if you're a high achiever and you're ambitious and you're driven, if you set these minuscule goals because you're so sick of failing, not going to get very exciting. So we need inspiration. Inspiration comes in two parts. Inspiration comes from the information you're consuming, whether it's this podcast or YouTube channel or anyone else out there that you feel excites you or motivates you or gives you that drive and energy and keeps you informed on the topics you enjoy learning about. If your business is in tech and AI, then watching some of those videos or listening to those podcasts or reading books about these things or taking courses will remind you of why you do what you do. Your why needs to be strong. You need to have that strong mission and consuming information on topics that you're passionate about, that you enjoy, that are linked to your why and your mission will help you to stay motivated and regain a bit of that juice that you lost after you collapsed on the ground, failure after failure after failure. So inspiration comes one part from the information you consume, books, podcasts, YouTube, courses, and on the other hand, from crafting these big, exciting dreams and visions. So when you've failed, ask yourself, is it still the same dream that you want to pursue and that was just a blip along the road? Or maybe that's the end of that door. That's the end of that whole chapter. Depends what failure it is. And then it's, okay, what's the next step? What's the next big dream? What's really exciting for me? And set your motion towards this big, exciting dream. The most important thing that I want you to remember here is if you failed and failed and failed and feel like quitting, you can quit. You don't need my permission for it. <laughs> But if you quit, make sure it's because it's not aligned anymore or really it's not enjoyable anymore or you found something else that really is more aligned and exciting. But never, ever, 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 ever quit because you stopped believing in yourself or in that dream. That's not a reason to quit. That's a reason to continue, to step up, to change the way you function, to absorb and learn new information that will get you to that next level and that next step. And that was one of the most important lessons in my own journey was sometimes we need to quit. Absolutely. There's many different things I've done in my business that I've stopped. But I've never stopped because I stopped believing. Stopped because it wasn't aligned or I didn't really like that process or I was just trying it out. I don't use, for example, Instagram or Twitter. Not my thing. I do all of my work through LinkedIn. And that was just through own learning, but not because I stopped believing they would work, just because I enjoyed more the other platform. That's how you know when to quit or not to quit. It's not to do with failure. So let's briefly recap. First step was your own psychology, mindset, thoughts around it. Confront the failure and the situation. Accept the emotions. Radical self-compassion. Be kind to yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself, criticizing. Then we move to the action part. Take baby steps, small wins, rebuild that self-esteem and self-trust in that area. Don't stay on the failure, rebuild from the action part. And the third one is seek inspiration. On the field that you're in, topics that interest you, self-development, professional development, spirituality, and then maybe your field specifically of interest within your business or fitness or mental health or personal life, whatever it is, seek that inspiration to get you motivated again after that little drop and redefine what's your vision, what are your dreams, what are your goals ahead that you can channel and feel excited about again. So I hope this was useful for you. Please share in the comments, especially if you're watching on YouTube, what helps you to deal with failure? What are certain tools, techniques, things that you do, whether it's mentally or in terms of taking action that help you to cope with failure. I would love to hear this from you. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel, YouTube channel or to Spotify. And thank you so much for tuning in.